Well, hello there, and welcome to Amore with Ellie. This once-a-week 30-minute show covers love and relationship topics with a metaphysical twist. I'm a certified sex coach and relationship intuitive. I'm also the creator of Out of Body Ecstasy. It's a personal energy method using dreams, astral travel, or telepathy to enhance your romantic life in a minute if you're in a relationship or if you're flying solo. Now, besides this show, I also have another one called The Ellie Thee Show. It's Thursday nights from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Blog Talk Radio. And I also have a more of a sexual topic show called The Passion Zone on Sunday nights from 6 to 6.30 p.m. I'm also on Blog Talk Radio. And starting this Friday, I have Amori with Allie, uh, the radio show version, live on Woo 91 FM from 10 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. You can listen to it live on your radio station. Uh, on your radio dial, I guess, <laughs> uh, from 10 to 11 p.m. at 91 FM. Or if you're not in the Northeast Ohio area, you can go to iHeartRadio and listen to it there. Or, third choice, you can Google Woo 91, Woo, W-O-O, 91 FM, and listen to it live on the website. But yes, this Friday, I'm excited, <laughs> kind of nervous. Um, I'm known everywhere. Uh, all over the world except for where I live. So this is this is an experiment. Uh, Worcester, Ohio is kind of um, a traditional type of town, very um, oriented in their past. So having a psychic and a sex coach living within their, their boundaries and doing a show live on a radio station within their boundaries is really quite new <laughs> here. Um, I'll be interested to see how it is received. Uh, I have to manage what I say very carefully on the air. I cannot, if I bring up any type of sexual topic, I have to dance around it and kind of make it uh, Disney-like, uh, just in case whomever might be listening is listening. And even though it's a 10 to 11 p.m. slot on a Friday night and kids aren't usually up that late, um, I still have to follow the rules of the station, which is hosted by the College of Worcester. So, you'll see me dancing around quite a bit of things. <laughs> but please join in. Uh, the more listeners I get on Moon 91, um, hopefully they'll keep me on. It's kind of, I'm in a probation period. So if I behave myself and I actually bring these listeners in, uh, they'll extend me at least until uh, college breaks for the summer in May, or maybe June. So please listen and uh, send me your questions and topics and whatnot. Now, uh, oh, oh, yeah, to find out more about me, um, I forgot to put that part in, visit AllieThies.com. There we go. Now, the last time I did a show, uh, we did an affirmation. And it was, my life is full of romantic love, unconditional love, and love that pushes me to be the best person I can be. You know, and a lot of time that, that one love, that one true unconditional love, whether it is a romantic love or it could be a love of a child or a parent or a sibling, really pushes us to be the person we're supposed to be. For myself, it's been my son. Uh, he most certainly is an unconditional love uh, and he challenges me as a 12-year-old uh, that he is every single day. And he does push me to be the best person I can be. I could sit back and really not do anything. Or I could, um, I could have taken a job in accounting. I could have taken a job as um, a psychiatric um, assistant or whatnot at one of the major hospitals here. But I chose not to although all of them are very worthy professions, uh, but to be the best I could be in the field I'm supposed to be in, which is sitting here talking to you. And you know, the sitting here part, why, why I'm talking about sitting, um, I know it has nothing to do with the affirmation, me sitting, but sitting drives me crazy. I just let you know, I'm used to being up and moving around and talking with my hands. I'm a big hand talker. And because where the camera is, and because it's a small camera, and I'm sitting down, I talk with my hands, but you can't see my hands because they're beneath the camera. Uh, <laughs> I like to stand up. I like to talk. I like to move things. I like to walk around. Um, when I have stuff, I like to show it. And it feels weird to um, try to demonstrate things. Uh, you know, dressing a candle, um, showing you, say, for instance, the oil, which is a lang-a-lang, which I happen to have today, but you can't actually 
I can show you a bottle of Lang Lang, but really, it's a bottle of oil. Um, but sitting here and trying to dress a candle, holding it up with the with the oil and putting it into its holder and doing stuff with it, uh, showing you spells and whatnot, uh, isn't actually easy sitting here. So I'm putting it out there. My goal <laughs> is to uh, do a Moria with Alley, the video part, um, with a larger camera, maybe uh, with somebody behind the camera, so that I can move around and do what I do and do well, <laughs> instead of just sitting here. I am not a sitting person, uh, which is something my son has help, helps me do and be the best person I can be. So, that's where I was going because of the affirmation. Um, let's see, what kind of notes do I have? Anything interesting? I told you updates. I suppose that's it. Uh, so the quote of the week. This was once said by William Shakespeare. It was from one of his plays, and I'm sure you guys, somebody will know what play it's from. Off the top of my head, I do not know. It may be Romeo and Juliet. Um, but he once said, The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. That's so nice, isn't it? Um, the more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Hmm. So that was by William Shakespeare. Now, the first question we have coming up here for the viewers' questions, and if you want to send me a question, send me an email to amori at agelessknowledge.com. Very simple. I just need uh, the question. And if you would like some initials, uh, if I don't ever have any initials, I throw things in. I make up initials. I make up names. I'm quite creative, so I'm good at that. Um, so for me not to do that, please put in initials. Okay, first question here. Uh, my name is NB. Hi, NB. And would like to know how RF feels towards me. Thanks. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for sending in the question. Uh, I like politeness. So, I like thank yous. Um, you know, RF, when I see RF in the way that he looks at you, um, there is an overwhelming feeling of friendship. I can see the friendship, I don't know how to put it, friendship energy. Um, a lot of pink, but there's a lot of um, yellow in there and a little bit of blue for communications. So I can see the friendship energy. And on the fringe of the friendship energy is more of a crimson color, which I am viewing towards passion and more of a sexual type of love as opposed to the inner part, which is a friendship type of love. So there is a confusion about what RF wants to do. Does RF want to move from point A to point B? Doesn't know. Doesn't know what to do. What do you want to do? And have, if you decided what you want to do with this relationship, does RF know what you want to do with this relationship? If you haven't been upfront and um, truthful about what you want, how's RF going to know what, what they want? You know, that, that's the thing about relationships, especially new relationships starting out. Um, we assume we know what the other person is thinking. We assume we know what they want. We assume they know what we want. But unless you actually tell a person... They don't know. You know, assumptions kill relationships no matter what stage they're in. So do you and RF a favor. And you don't have to say, come out and say, hey, gosh, I want a long-term relationship, romantic relationship with you. What do you think? You know, you don't have to go quite like that. But you can say, hey, you know, RF, um, I have more romantic feelings towards you. Or I kind of like you more than a friend. You can say that. Uh, what do you think? Is this, is this something we can explore further? Or are you okay just in the friendship stage? Or the friendship with benefits? I mean, what do you want? Can we move beyond this? If we can't, then, you know, okay. Let's redefine a relationship and go from there. you got to define the relationship. It's, it's, nothing is ever black and white. There's always that gray area in the middle. So just make sure you know where that gray area area is and um, talk about it and uh, get your points. Okay? So there are feelings, but again, RF doesn't know where to take those feelings. So discuss it with them. Okay, up. Okay, up. So thank you very much for sending in your question. Now, the topic of the week, um, I love flower essence. And uh, I've been using them for a very long time. And helping clients use them 
Um, one of my goals this year, I hope, I hope I can do it, is to be certified in flower essence um, as a practitioner. I mean, I know what I'm doing, but people seem to be more at ease if they see that you're certified in something um, by a authority on it. So, anyways, that's what I'm hoping to do this summer. And a lot of people do, believe it or not, ask me what, what kind of flower essence can they use for love. And there's flower essence to um, open yourself up for love. There's flower essence for healing your heart in order to be able to accept love. And if you've never dealt with the flower essence, you can always Google, of course. But flower essence, what it is technically is the essence of the flower. And the essence of the flower, what it works with is your energy body. It doesn't interfere with any uh, physical pills you take, any type of medication you, you're on. So you can take flower essence and any type of pills you need to take for, if it's, um, I don't know, uh, depression or for a heart medication, um, insulin for diabetes, you can take both. Because flower essence, again, works with the energy field. So some um, flower essence that I found that are great for love is one's Angelica. It helps um, feeling love in the care of spiritual beings, which means not only is it love for yourself and love for your fellow man, but it's love for any type of spiritual beings like um, cats, dogs, horses, frogs, and whatnot. There's baby blue eyes. Now that, happen, that helps to open the heart to spiritual presence despite hard life experiences. So if you've had hard times in, in your life when it comes to love and have had your heart broken many times, it's kind of easy to shut the heart chakra down, you know, and say, I've had enough. Uh, baby Blue Eyes helps to open that heart chakra back up again. Because without that heart chakra open, it's kind of difficult for you to uh, give and receive love. Uh, there's also Bleeding Heart. It's freedom in love. It helps you overcome unhealthy attachments. A lot of times we get stuck on a past love and we can't move forward because we're stuck on that past love. That's an unhealthy attachment. It helps you to release that unhealthy attachment. It also helps you to attract somebody who could be an unhealthy attachment for you. So in the past, if you're always in a savior mode and you tend to find people who um, have problems with drugs or um, are mentally unstable or alcoholics, this will help you to not attract those type of people. Okay? Um, California Wild Rose. It helps to have enthusiastic involvement in life. And if you're going to be in love, there is that involvement in life. Because to be in love is to be involved. And to be involved in life is expressing and receiving love. So, California Wild Rose. We also have Chicory. And chicory is not just for coffee. <laughs> it's also for flower essence. Um, it helps give a selfishness for expressing love, to let go of possessiveness and clinging, or seeking love through negative attention. So if you're a type of person who seeks love through some type of abuse, whether it's a, some sort of obsessive towards a person, you're showering lots and lots of attention to them, um, that's negative. Um, or if it's drugs, alcohol, um, some sort of mental disposition, this helps with that type of stuff. Um, fawn Lily. Now, when I say mental disposition, um, I'm not saying to take the flower essence and not take any pills you may be taking some sort of, for some sort of um, mental displacement. Uh, you always take pills that are recommended by your doctors or psychiatrists or psychologists. So, I'm not saying uh, substitute. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay. Um, fawn lily. And what a strange name, huh? But fawn lily uh, kind of reminds me of a nice little deer. Fawn lily is the ability to translate lofty spiritual feelings into warm, flowing impulses of love. So say, for instance, you do um, out-of-body work, like I do a lot of, and you're connected to a person spiritually in the lofty realms of the astral realm, but not in the physical sense. This uh, flower essence helps you take those feelings you have for that person in the astral realm and helps you to bring them down to earth. So not only do you attract them on the astral realm, you attract them on the physical plane as well. Okay? Um, forget me not, which is great for understanding the karmic, the karmic meaning behind relationships. And a lot of relationships we have, you know, they come from a past life. 
So Forget Me Not is fantastic for understanding the karmic re meaning behind them. Um, Holly is for compassionate understanding of others. And a lot of times we want love, but uh, we have a difficult time showing compassion to other people. And when I mean compassion for others, I mean it can be compassion for cats, dogs, fly, uh, turtles, plants, trees. Um, it's also compassion for people less fortunate than you. If you're um, well off financially and you're behind somebody in the grocery store aisle line and they're paying with their um, food stamp card as opposed to using cash, which is what or your credit card like you're doing. And your first thought is, oh God, that freeloader. I mean, you don't know their story. You don't know what's going on with them. But this um, flower essence, Holly, helps you to look at that person and instead of jumping to a conclusion, show some compassion because you don't know their life story. You don't know how they got there. You don't know why they're there, period. Okay? Um, I can't say this one, but we're going to try. Mariposa? That sounds like Mari Povich. Um, M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A. -A. Lily. It's receptive to human love. You got to be receptive. You have to give and allow yourself to receive. A lot of times, like say for myself, I am fantastic at giving out love. I am great. Um, I give lots of unconditional love to people, to animals, to trees. Um, but I, I find it extremely difficult to receive the love. I don't know why. I'm a worthy person. Um, I'm fantastic. <laughs> I know I'm fantastic, and I'm not. I don't mean it in a self-centered way. We're all fantastic, but I know I am. But I still seem to have a problem with receiving love. Human love. Animals, I got no problem with. Um, animals, I can pick up and squish and hug and kiss and, and tickle their little belly and be fine with it. And um, I'm absolutely fine with um, receiving love from my son. He can give me hugs and kisses all he wants. But other people, uh, I have a hard time with. I mean, I can hug people. I can hug strangers. But I can't hug people that are the closest to me. It makes no sense. I know this. Uh, so which is why I tend to uh, use flower essence from time to time if I recognize that at, at that period I'm having a difficult time. Um, there's also pink monkey flower. I know what a name, huh? Pink monkey flower. Um, it helps with the ability to express genuine feelings of love and warmth due to fear and shame. Uh, we have the yellow star turlup. Turlup. Tulip. Not a turlup, it's a tulip. Yellow star tulip, which, matter of fact, I have one in the front yard. Not right now, it's winter time, but uh, in the summer, yeah, I only got one tulip and it shows up. Um, it helps to develop compassion and understanding for the needs of others. In this world, we seem to lack a lot of compassion for fellow humans and for animals alike. So, yellow star tulip helps with that. There you go. Flower Essence for Love. There's a lot more. There's tons more. But those are the very popular ones. Um, next, we have another viewer's question. If you want to send me a question, amore at agelessknowledge.com. And again, people who send me questions get put in the hopper to win a free 15-minute reading from yours truly. You and I talk, or you and I I am, but one way or the other, we chat for 15 minutes. Um, so this is the initials are R-I-N-J-P. And they say, hello, Allie. Hello. I want to know if the guy that I like is going to make a move. I get weird signs when it comes to him, so I don't know if we're meant to be, or if the signs are just coincidences. Thank you. You're welcome. See? Polite. Um, I don't believe in coincidences. I don't. Everything happens for a reason. Everything is a sign. Um, the, the point is we think of their coincidences when we're paying attention to the signs. Say, like, oh, hey, look at that. It's like, for instance, um, I applied to be part of this big sci-fi convention, to be a speaker about OBE um, travels and OBE sex. Will I get in? I don't know. But when I was at filling out the application, I thought to myself, God, it would be fantastic to meet so-and-so at this convention. And before I knew it, so-and-so was following me on Twitter. And I thought, well, that's weird. How did that happen? Because so-and-so and I, have we have no relationship with one another. We don't know one another. Um, I just thought it'd be cool, you know, because I've watched different things I've done over the years. 
Um, and so I applied, and then within hours, this person um, follows me. So, you know, again, that could be a coincidence. I tend to think of it as a sign, because as I was filling out the form, this is the person that pops into my head. Um, and then this person shows up, which is still weird. Uh, so it's a good thing. To me, I'm going to get picked for this convention. And if I do, I will let everybody know, because I am a sci-fi and fantasy nerd. So nerdy. Um, I still have my Star Wars lightsaber from 1977. That's how nerdy I am. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyways, so coincidences. I, I don't believe in them. If you see something and you recognize it, then it's a sign. And you know it's a sign because you paid attention. So, he likes you. He likes you. He's just scared. And he's nervous. Uh, eventually, he's going to make a move. It's going to take some time. Um, I mean, guys get nervous. You know? Because uh, in this world, even though women make, make lots of money, and we're in jobs that men traditionally used to do, we still always expect the guy to ask us out first. Most women do, not all. When, you know, you know how much guts it takes for a guy to ask a girl out? <laughs> it takes a lot. Why don't you ask him? I'll tell you why, because you're scared you're going to get turned down. Well, why would he be just as scared? If you want something or somebody, don't wait around and wait for them to make the move. Ask them out. Well, is there a chance he'll say no? Of course there's a chance. Even if he likes you, there's a chance he'll turn you down. Is there a chance you'll turn him down? Of course there is. Even if you like him, there's still that chance. It goes both ways. So don't wait. I say go for it. Ask him. It doesn't have to be some big brouhaha. Just ask him out for coffee. That's it. Coffee. Glass of water. And if you two work in the same area, just say, hey, I'm going down and grab some coffee. You want to come with me? And that way, you know, if he says no, he's basically turning the coffee down and not you. See how that works? Yes. Do it. But yeah, eventually he'll make a move, but I mean, how long do you want to wait? I say, we're in 2013. You ask him. Okay? Okay. Good luck. Okay, magical item of the week. A lang a lang. I just like the name. You know, really. What are you using today? I'm using a little bit of a lang a lang. It has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Um, no, a lang a lang oil, it, the planet it represents is Venus. The element is water. You can use it for love, sex, and peace. Not a piece of love and sex, but peace as in peace and love, baby. You know, peace. Uh, it's a great, sweet, invigorating scent. It just, well, I shouldn't say it's invigorating. It's more soothing because it's, it's for peace. But for me, it's invigorating because it can be used for um, increasing sexual desire. So for me, I also think it's invigorating for that respect. Um, it's also used to draw love to you. It's, um, it's fantastic uh, for peace. Uh, let's say you and somebody has a fight, you and your significant other, you and a child, you know, the household's up in an uproar, uh, the big brouhaha going on. You know, if you put a little bit of Lang Lang into um, an essential oil diffuser with a nice sweet aroma, kind of like soothes people out, calms people down. It's been known to calm dogs down. Uh, I haven't tried it, although I'm considering trying it out uh, when my dogs are in there, one of their one of their, I'm going to rip your head off because you stole my chewy mode. Spray a little bit of Lang Lang and see if you call it, basically calm, calm the old lab down more than the, uh, what is he, Blue Healer. Um, they're both, both something else. But, you know, if, for love, if you want to use it to draw love, you can dress a candle with it, burn it, and, and imagine yourself drawing a love to you. Um, if you want to um, go out and attract love, then, or if you say you want to go out and maybe you and your boyfriend or girlfriend had a fight, and you're going to meet up and, and talk it out, um, put a little bit of Lang Lang on you. 
you know, a little bit on the wrist, a little bit over here on the neck, maybe behind the ears, ladies in the chest, you know, the breast area, um, and then go out. Now, as you're putting it on, it's always good to imagine yourself accomplishing whatever it is you want to accomplish, whether it's soothing over stuff, maybe soothing over and then having makeup sex afterwards, or soothing it over and just rekindling an old love, um, whatever you want to happen, imagine it as you're putting the oil on. Whether it's you're putting it on yourself, or if you're dressing a candle, or if you're putting it into a diffuser. Love, sex, and peace is what a lang a lang is good for. I think everybody should have some in their uh, essential oil cabinet. It's fantastic stuff. Now, believe it or not, we are here at the end. Um, I need to catch up again. So I'll be doing the second, this next um, Amore with Allie uh, sooner, maybe the next couple days, as opposed to waiting an entire week. And the topics I'm going to do next time are astral sets and mugwort. Both two fun things. Um, an astral sex, I'm not sure how far I'll get with it, um, so I'll make it way over the half an hour, because you have to talk about astral travel and astral sex. Um, we'll see how far I get. Uh, it's, it's a popular topic. A lot of people come to my website to learn more about it, so we'll chat. And mugwort, I mean, just the name, mugwort, kind of like a lang, -a -lang. Uh It's just a fun name, so we'll talk about that. Now, the affirmation I have for you guys for this week is, I am everything I am here to be. A lot of people are worried that they're missing out on something, that they're not doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. We see this affirmation, I am everything I am here to be. Then the avenues open up for you to be what you're supposed to be in this lifetime. So it opens up opportunities and love and travel and... Um, new lo locations. Of course, it also means that people and places and things and jobs can run away. But it puts you in the position you're supposed to be in. I am everything I am here to be. Say that at least three times a day um, until we do the next Amore with Allie. So until next time, I want to thank you for stopping by and watching Amore with Allie. If you could tell a few of your friends about me, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And until next time, Keep laughing, keep living, and of course, always keep loving. Take care of yourselves. Bye.